Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen, and today what we're going to do is we're going to continue on with some of our studies of the Mastering Roses series. Today in volume number five, this is the video that's going to go along with some of the techniques I use in volume number five of the Mastering Roses series. We're going to be using a large brush, a three quarter inch brush. So I have a series, here's the, the first four volumes of the series. And uh, yeah, I sh in this series, I show you how to visualize and paint roses and some of the many different techniques that I use to paint roses. There's 10 volumes in this series, and we're slowly going through each one of the volumes, okay? So if you really want to learn how to paint roses and some of the techniques I use to paint roses, you can look into that uh, series of books. And there's associated videos that go with each, uh, uh, each one of those books. So we're going to use a large brush. Now, why do we use a large brush? Well, a large brush forces you to break a lot of your habits. I come from decorative painting where we use a lot of different strokes to build structures of objects. And that hindered me for a long time in painting uh, roses. Because to get beautiful casual roses, you really don't have a defined, as much as a defined structure. There's still some structure there that we have to be able to visualize, but you don't build it with a series of strokes, which tend to make the objects a little more stiff. And if I paint a smaller brush, I have a a tendency to follow this stroke pattern. So I start to reset it. It's just kind of like reset your computer. I reset my brain into thinking about the shapes and stuff by using a large brush that I can't always figure out how to stroke it. So my brush starts to use different corners, different angles and stuff of the brush. And that's what we're going to show you. And that's what volume five of the book shows you is basically resetting your thinking and painting the entire painting here with a large brush. So what I have here is, um, this is just a wood panel. It's 14 by 18. You can do this on anything. You can create your own designs. I'm going to be using the uh, colors from the Art of Painting, Painted Simply, which is my black and white. Um, I have burnt sienna out here. Sometimes I like to use that. I'll probably use that in today's painting. Uh, uh, intermediate green, which is the pine green. The uh, thalo blue and uh, red violet, nice cool red violet, nice warm naphtha red light, and uh, some Hansa yellow. To that sometimes, and you know, into a painting, I will use my yellow oxide, which I'll probably use today, because I love this, I love this color, older traditional yellow color. Uh, I love it. Sometimes I'll add diox purple. I always put a little bit of that out. Now I've mixed these up into the global colors, which means I've put the colors into those things there. And I've mixed up about 10 to 20 percent of extender medium. I've just left them open for 24 hours or so, stirring them up about every eight hours, or so to uh, to get the, uh, the extender and the and the paint mixed up well. And that also allows for some water evaporation. And if you let that happen, the colors dry uh, quite a bit slower. Also, have out a uh, little container here of extender. And I'll probably, a nice dirty extender from all my paintings, I'll probably uh, add a little bit more to that, fill that up, because we'll probably use that. I use this just to, it's uh, slow drying, I'll have to worry about too much slow drying because I'm using the colors as global, but um, it will uh, also help thin out the colors, because we do. I do a lot of techniques where I put the... Uh, uh, tacking color and then putting thinner color on top in into the layers. We'll talk about that as we get going, okay? So basically I have just a little bit of white here on the board, not opaque. We're, I'm going to cover most of it back up. And I'm going to start out first, I'm going to start uh, just to put a little bit of extender in my brush here. And I'm just going to kind of come up with a concept of the roses. So I paint all different kinds of rose compositions. And sometimes I put them in containers and vases and, and tape laying on tables and just hanging ones. Uh, hanging ones are sell very, very well for me. So I always like to do a little bit of those. I'm going to take some, um, maybe let's just work down on the corner of our brush. Let's just make a color, a sketching color. Let's take some black and white and some burnt sienna, any kind of sketching color you want. Sometimes I'll do this with a little bit of green in it, you know. I uh, Sometimes I just sketch completely with burnt sienna. I just make a nice soft color that I can sketch. And since I have a real light background here, I'm just going to sketch a little bit. And I'm just going to use the corner of my brush. This will help me. So let's just say, you know, I, I'm coming here and I don't want to just put flowers here into the center. And, you know, there's, there's all kinds of design concepts out there that, that artists use, like you know, never put a, a you know, a, you know, like three or something like that, or use an even number, look, you know, look to an odd number and never put exactly center. 
I don't follow those. I've I've seen some beautiful older classic paintings that look just absolutely wonderful, hanging in all the beautiful museums of Europe. I went over there, and, you know, for years I've been going over there and visiting those, and you know what they they don't follow those design concepts. You know, I certainly appreciate them and and agree with some of them, but you know I find that a lot of artists do put beautiful things and violate them. So, but what I want to have is I'm going to put maybe like three. Um, roses up here towards the center of this right up into this area here and maybe we'll trail down this way so one of the first things i'll do is maybe take my my idea of my line and say okay i'm going to have a stem this is going to be maybe the movement maybe a nice s movement down through my flowers down this way my stems will come up here all this is going to cover up this is just going to be my line of movement here now I will p pick out one of my main roses that I want into the painting. Let's put a main rose right about in here like that, okay? Uh, let's put a secondary rose. Not going to not gonna be pointed the same way. Um, let's put another rose maybe out this way. That would help follow the line. Now, I've got to be careful because I don't want to develop a, a perfect line here. So let's turn that one down just a bit here. And maybe I'll come down here and drop another one that's going to be out this way here like this okay and uh, you know out in through here out into this area we can do some smaller rosebuds or something like this or continue the rosebud pattern of that folding down this way down this direction here so that might that might work really well so that's an idea this this is just you know we we've talked about row shapes in volume number one that they're circles and circles and ovals ovals if you're going to open them up a little bit more now what i'll do is i'll just come in we'll use just a corner of the brush here i'll set the looking direction i'll start here with my first main flower here and let's set its looking direction you wherever you put that center like we discussed in volume one wherever you push that center that's where that rose is going to look. The viewer is going to look. So we'll push that down there and we'll push a little bit there in for uh, the shadow there of that. We don't want to, we don't want to go just absolutely opposite here uh, of these. And I'm going to change this direction just a bit. In other words, we don't want to, um, you know, push these both out this direction. So this one may be just a little gentle up here like this and look like that so that takes your eye so this one is coming back up this way here uh, this one so this one comes up at this angle here this one is at this angle let's push this one to this angle and that one there then we've got a falling down angle here to our roses so let's push this one at this angle and this one will come down like that and then this one can come maybe right down here like that. That gives me a good set of nice angles of my roses and stuff coming through, going back down that way. So we get just an idea of, of how we're gonna paint that. And this might change, we might change some of that. Now I keep these, at least these two here, close together to what we call formal. I might push these two together a little bit more formal. What that does is it gives more weight right into that area there. And then I get less formal or I start to separate it out. That makes your composition feel a little bit more airy. So in a good floral composition, you want to go in there and put the flowers in kind of into a formal area and then slowly as you step out informal separating them allowing some airspace and that gives a nice flow because the viewer will always go into where we call the anchor the formal area where it's anchored in there and then your eye flows out and through so that's good that's just good setup now let's work on our some of our background here i want to use some Maybe some yellows here, yellows, a light yellow green or something like that. Um, I, I love the burnt sienna colors in there. Let's take some yellow, some yellow oxide burnt sienna, some black. Um, let's just make a nice kind of a darker color right in here like this. And we'll do a little bit of a, almost like a negative painting in this. We're going to take a lot of time in developing this background because it's going to be very light and... and uh, I don't want to have it completely light, so we'll, I'm a big believer in painting the background right along with the flower. So I'll adjust my background several times, you know, as as I go through the painting. So let's put a little bit of that in there. Let's get some uh, greens in here, which would be, you know, suggestive of of greens and leaves and stuff up into these areas in here. These will just anchor in some of our uh, 
our nice um, uh, you know uh, suggestion of stems and, and shadows to the backgrounds and stuff and then we'll lighten up a little bit as we come out but let's just get very suggestive right now and what this does is it starts to it, it, and I get a little crazy but what it does is it starts to lighten up my feeling you know a lot of you write to me all the time oh I still get a little bit too stiff okay you need to do these types of exercises with your brush, with your big brush. You need to do these types of exercises because this lightens you up and, and gets your feeling light and airy. And, you know, the other thing is you need to paint, you know, 20, 25 of them so you get the confidence of doing that too. So it's never something you can just sit down and do immediately. It takes a bunch of practice. But I do this a lot. I, I will, you know, work my colors and, and put these all in here like this and... And then I'll start to lighten up my tones a bit. Let's get some lighter color into this. Work these lighter tones out into here. We'll get some beautiful stuff. I got out a palette knife because sometimes in some of the paintings with you, I use uh, the, the palette knife and I push my colors together like that and, you know, drive these together like that. I like how those go together. That, you know, make some of those nice model -y tones back in there. We'll do that here as we get some color on. We got to get some color onto this first here. So let's just get some, let's work on getting some of this. I want to give this, uh, you know, just a powerful feeling of light and dark into this painting here. So we'll work that. But I want to also, like up in here, you know, strike in some yellow. So a little yellow shows up. Some of my burnt siennas show up in here. I want to play my colors. Well, later on, you know, we'll add some, we'll add some reds back up in here as well. You know, we'll, we'll play some of these colors. But I love, see, the, the brush makes that kind of nice. And the knife gives just a little more textury look to it, uh, which is another beautiful look to the painting, which I really, uh, really enjoy. So we'll look at using them both here for just a little bit as we set this up. Let's go with more of a nice, light, warm, yellowy green here. And let's go right into some more white right out here. And because I do like that light background out here at the edge. Sorry if you can't quite see some of that, but I'm just working this around and I want to work these colors in. And I'm just kind of deciding a little bit of my colors. You know, I like to see the knife, you know, works these colors like this. We've seen that in some of the other volumes. I show you in some casual paintings how I do some of my casual paintings and stuff but you know working the big brush and using the big brush and using the knife like this into getting some of these uh, some of these textures like this see this different texturing I get going on into the painting um, this is really really helps you get that nice casual feeling or that loose feeling to it and uh, you know having to paint with the big brush like this is also does great things for your painting so We'll get some yellow, some burnt sienna. You know, maybe we'll touch just a, you know, I don't use black that often, but maybe we'll just, that'll just help tone that color down just a bit. Put a little bit of that burnt sienna right into that green there and just lightly take your brush and go through like that. And look at what that does for generating, you know, color movement and interest within your painting here. It's great. We might strike a little yellow, just boom, right out there like that push some of that in because some of these roses might have yellow on them okay now what we think is about volume and shadow that's why I have it a little bit darker going down through here as you go down towards the bottom or if you have a bouquet like this that we're painting and we have volume of shadow you know we'll have a darker shadow uh, here this gives the viewer the feeling of light and dark moving through the painting so it gives you the feeling of a light area and shadow area now Definitely, we will lighten this up a bit as we come down here towards the bottom. Get a little bit of green into that. Move some of those colors lightly together here. And uh, we might even toss in a little yellow in there. Here, let's just move some of that together. Maybe let it get a little bit lighter out here as it moves away from the, the, the form, or what we call the form shadow, the casting shadow of this clump of flowers as you move away from it of course you'll get lighter again as the light is allowed back into the composition here because the objects aren't shadowing anymore okay so let's just move some of this around back here and i just i love the movement of the knife see that just nice 
casual movement. I hold the knife very flat, I push down onto the surface, and I just slide it around here. It works really well, and uh, it just gives a different type of movement, which is contrary, really, to some of the brush movement that I have going here, and that, that causes a nice contrast to the brush that I'm doing here. So that works uh, pretty well there. Let's get some more, work some more of that. You know, maybe this whole part of the composition over here has just a bit more yellow in it. We can do that. Let's just kind of clean up some of our colors and toss them on the surface. I like to get the colors in here. Once you get colors on here, like this, it's very easy to go back and change. So it's very easy to go in there and lighten up an area, toss in a little yellow. You know, like if I'm up here and I say, hey, I want to have a, you know, I feel that's a little bland right up there. I want to have a little more splash of yellow or yellow green. It's easy to go in there and spot add some of these colors, just spot additions there. Just add them in just to get a little bit more color movement or color contrast. And some of that you don't know now, but you'll find out a little bit later on in the painting as you get your flowers on and get some leaves on. Some of those compositional things will, you know, will get, get slowly get answered there for you. Okay, so we'll just push that around there like that. Let's go back out a little bit lighter here. Out here, let me just move this over for a second. Get a little bit lighter here towards this end of this part of the painting there. And I like to use a lot of paint here. You know, I mean, paintings get their interest and colors and movements and stuff get their interest from, from paint. And I had a tendency for years to paint with not enough paint. I didn't use enough paint and and uh, so my paintings lack some interest. So now I go in there and I just grab some colors and some paint, a lot of paint, and I work and manipulate this thick paint back like this. And that uh, that gives a lot more interest. So some of, some people always write to me and say, wow, your, your backgrounds have so much interest. And that's because I'm not stingy with the paint. I'm adding quite a bit of paint down here into these things and uh, you know getting quite a bit of paint going and I, I like that. Let's get some of this green and black and burnt sienna back into our our shadowing colors here of that. Right back in there maybe a little bit of our yellow into those as well there. And let's just reset some of those forming shadows that back up in there. That's good. Pull down maybe a bit. You can add some motion to the painting, like here, I'll pull down and cross it a bit, but you know, your brush, your movements, especially this three quarter that we're painting with, just add some nice movements here. And you know, just by pulling down like that, see that interest of movement that that adds to that there. Might wanna change the color up a bit, just a touch bit there, and pull down a little bit more. Maybe that's a, you know, the movement of some leaves and stuff pulling down there but it helps pull that unit down. So this goes, if I'm having these flowers come this way, this pulling it down gives just a, a, a little bit different uh, feeling to it. And that's what I'm doing. So when I'm kind of deciding on my background, and this is very important, when I'm kind of deciding on my background, I want my background to contrast slightly the movement of flowers. Now we set up first this kind of S movement here. So I want my background to be maybe the horizontal and the, uh, the horizontal here and the vertical pull because my S is at an angle here to the line. So my flowers will contrast against the background and that will force the flowers to jump off the surface. If I paint my background horizontal and I put a horizontal movement like some flowers sitting on a table, the, the background does not contrast the flowers. It absorbs the flowers and they don't jump off of, you, off of it for you. And so a lot of people will say, well, uh, you know, I, you need more contrast or they'll think it's a color thing. And it's not a color thing. Your problem is your contrast of your uh, contrast of your design, really, of your strokes and the movement of your brush. They're not contrasting each other. So, you know, we'll pull down a little bit right in here like this might be a very important area because this is where I might come back down right in here with this little tendril coming out here and another little rosebud right out there. And so, uh, you know, that area having some horizontal and some vertical lines contrasting the angled line here from the composition will um, really look kind of nice there because they'll contrast and bring each other forward. So 
We'll leave that in there right now. We got a nice deep form shadow in there to put that in. So, so now on this background you see here, and you can soften with your finger, or you know sometimes come back and add some movement here with your finger through as well. You know this. We want to get some of these movements back down through like that. And that just adds interest. See that nice movement back through that background there. You can just, you know, push a little bit, because I have light color underneath there too. Just push a little bit and drag some of that color, you know, back and forth. And and uh, that just gives some of that nice variation to the movement here of your background, which will be counter to the movement that I am doing here. On and I'll wipe off my finger there. I'm just going to pull this light right down there like that. See how it just gives that movement there? And just take that off a bit. We did some of this in the uh, casual uh, painting there. Casual expressions. I showed you backgrounds, background movements, and stuff like that into this book. And there's some really pretty books, especially like the paintings in here. Especially like this one here that shows where I did that. Or this uh, yellow one that's right up in here. And you'll see me and, and on this one, I'll go back and reset that. You'll see I set those that movement, that pulling down movement right there with my yellows and everything. You can see there in the step photos with the yellows and everything in there and that pulling down movement counter to how that flowers are going and that adds a lot of interest to, to your painting. Okay, alrighty. So we're gonna have some yellows and some pinky kind of flowers here moving into the rows moving together. I'm gonna take some of this color right here, right now, and kind of push this up to the side here like this. Okay, and uh, then what we'll do is we will add some light color right over here. I'm going to use this to make this kind of gray down white. Okay, so it's basically some of your green, black, burnt sienna, and and yellow oxide here, and it makes down this green, uh, this kind of gray color, gray down white color. And so I don't want to use pure white. I want to save pure white towards the end of the painting. Now I'm going to use my paint kind of thick and I'm going to use this brush. I also have that paper towel, which we talk about so much. I'm constantly wiping and adjusting the color in my paper towel. So I go through quite a few of them. So that's why I have a big stack of them right here off to the side, off camera. Big stack that I grab to every once in a while and use these. And sometimes I use uh, also terry cloth towels. And I like those as well, especially if I have a, a painting that is really casual and I want a lot of color harmony to it. I'll use one terry cloth towel and all the color builds up inside that terry cloth towel. And as you go wiping and adjusting your brush, you might pick up other little colors from other places of the composition and they just kind of carry together. You know, that's something when I was a decorative painter, boy, I'd never do that because I always wanted to keep my brush absolutely clean. I'd rinse it in water and change it. And then my paintings look so sterile. Now, my paintings don't look so much because my colors travel. I mean, look at the background. Look at how much color is in there. How those things, and how easy is that? You know, you never saw me rinse my brush once. As a matter of fact, I don't even have anything out here to clean my brush. I just use my towel, okay? So that's very important things. So I'm going to come up in here, and I'm just going to begin to set the, the surface, of, or the shape of my flower here. Bring that out again. We want to... We want to preserve that inside in there. Now, in one of the first lessons of the volume five is I put in the shadows and stuff of the of the flower, and then I come back in and I start its shape and I start building out the bowl of the flower first. Okay, so it's one of the first things that I'll build out. This just helps you see it. You see the bowl. We can pull out here it just right now just to give some ideas of the of the of the thing. Notice how I'm always wiping my brush. I'll pick up some color here. We can pull out just a bit to uh, and pull out in the angles like this. That'll uh, suggest where the petals are going to go. Sometimes I'll pull in. I never paint exactly the same around. That'll cause it to be stiff. And I let my brush, I'll use like little corners of the brush like this. Just little corners to get a little wispy and stuff like that. Here. And let's push this one in here. So here would be the bowl. That'll be our bowl, so we definitely see where our bowl is going to be. Outside petals here, we might collide this one with this one here. And we just let this, we don't know really what the back of this will be, so we'll just kind of blur these all together here. Just kind of bring them all together. And 
a lot of times you see me pull in and out or sideways like this. I'm just moving, manipulating the color. I blur it. I'm not blending it. I'm just blurring the tones together. Here will be this other one that's coming out here. Maybe it'll be a little bit smaller. So we'll just give an idea of it right here. And we want to leave some negative space, some dark space between that right there. That's where that rose will go. And I'm just going to take a little bit of the light hit. We wanted to have maybe a rose butt out here. Maybe one following right down here. We might even put one right down over here. So they're following down here uh, like that. Okay. All right. So that gets those uh, that first set of those in there. Okay. Now, we can you can move, like I show you in so many of the books, you can move through any kind of color, color progressions that you want to go because we paint what the painting needs. And we have other techniques, negative painting and, and, and everything. What I want to do is show you some of the things I do with the big brush. So I have this very, very soft expression right now of my flowers. And I have to start thinking about, uh, you know, some colors I want. I want some reds on these flowers and stuff. So I'll put some of I, I'll put out some of my nice, cool uh, red violet and my warm naphthol red light. I'll just kind of mix those together, get kind of a medium tone. And I kind of, when I'm painting with a big brush like this, I'm kind of always working on a corner. See how I load the corner like that? So I start to use that corner. I'll push the corner down in here like this. And then as I come out of that, that corner is the corner with all the color in it. As I come out of that, I'll start to use the other corner, which is the softer corner of the brush, and just kind of just sketch like this around. And see how you get that beautiful modeled movement to the brush. I know this is my heavier corner, that will deposit a lot so I can put on my bull shadow that we talk about in volume one and everything always preserving that bull shadow okay we also talk about you know with with a lot of flowers is creating the form shadow of the rose we talk about this in volume one setting up the form shadow so when we look at a rose here like this if my lights coming up in through this way I will have a corset's throat right in through here and then the bull shadow, which is that, and then the form shadow of the rose. And let's take, let, we don't want to always use the same color. So this time let's take some red violet, maybe some burnt sienna. And let's just put a little bit of that in there, change that up. Or add a, a touch of uh, yellow oxide in there. See how that changes that tone up right in there. And this will help us with, and see I have my heavy corner right here and I touch that down. And then I'm softening it by reaching over to the other side. And I just give these quick little movements. This is one technique I like to use. These quick little movements. Look at how that, that lightens and airies up. Let's take a look at that real close here. See how that lightens and airies up that, that composition. So as I come to another rose, of course, I don't want every single rose to look the same, right? And so we've got to change it. And that's something that you always go back, reference your palette again, get back in there, get some color, but don't use exactly the same color. So on this corner that I have this, I'm just going to pick up, and sometimes I don't even go to the palette here. Let's just pick up a nice little dollop of the red violet here, and let's use that. Now, see, that's going to make a different appearing center than this one. They'll be in harmony because they're the same colors, really. And I'll, I'll stay on that since I want this to be dark down in here quite a bit. I'll stay on that for a while and then roll over to the other side there just to soften it and blur it out into that background so I get a lost edge. But now I've got a, a different uh, look to the center. And I might, if I like that contrast, and that's beautiful contrast there, I might come in here and just touch a little bit of that dark just with that corner of that brush and drag that around. And look at the beautiful casual shape that you can create to that rose just with uh, using that, uh, you know, that the corner of this larger, this brush. And this is that three quarter inch fusion, which is so soft. So you can get some beautiful looks there. Let's take just a bit of that dark right down in there and really define. See, I'll push it on with that heavy side there and maybe come over here and grab some of that. Now, if you get too much of that, you know, onto the, on your brush, reset your brush, wipe that back off there again, get that extra off of there and you can, you know, get back in there and soften. But of course you'll have to get darker to put back in there again and then the other side to soften. And every once in a while, wipe it, which resets it and, and then uh, come back in and do some more. 
let's put in uh, some bull shadow here now a lot of times you know there's there's things I talk about into the book I use the chisel of the brush here like I'll, if I want to make a, a rose a little bit more specific here, you know, I'll use the chisel of the brush and change that. Especially if you have, you know, roses that are going to be close together, you want them to look a little bit different. So make them a little different. And maybe onto this one here, we'll use our finger a bit here to uh, to manipulate some of that color. Uh, so, you know, we just in case, you know, if you have especially have, you know, uh, issues where you're coming from decorative painting like I did, where you stroke the same strokes, put in your finger in your painting. And, you know, I do that with a lot of my thing, a lot of my students stick your finger in your painting and move it around. That helps you get a lot of difference to it. Let's also get some burnt sienna back down into this one here. So let me step back just a bit more. So I'll come back, grab a little bit of that burnt sienna. Let's give a a little bit more of a shadow side to this rose here so we'll keep that light coming right up down through here like that we uh, let me reset some of the light here see I'll just wipe my brush and see I got all those beautiful tones and they'll cross let me reset the light here and see well I'll, I'll just come in and I'll pick up that light on the edge like that so I want some contrast right here towards that edge of that bowl so I'll just push that on there like that and maybe right here. Just use the edge of that brush, that chisel part of the brush there like that. And pull down, maybe wipe that, because then I can use that to drag it down, the brush down to drag it down and, and soften that out. And so I build that bowl of that rose that way right there. But we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. But I do want this to be one of the main flowers of the painting, so I want to grab some color down there. Let's grab some more red violet, some of our burnt sienna. This will change it up a little bit. Let's tone it up a little bit. Take a little bit of your green. Take it right up here. Run that green into there. So we'll push. What this will do is soften back or tone back the red of our background. And it'll make the, the center here softer. So I'll push some of that nice darker color here now onto the corner. I'll use that corner. And then as I move out to my other corner here, let me just wipe and reset. I'll grab a little bit of that green in here with that. And see how that softens and and that's going to push back this rose back behind this one here keeping the color a little bit softer which is what I want so if I put the same color in there um, I, I wouldn't get that nice softness there so and you can use your finger here and wipe through like this to get some of the slight little curving remember we say in a rose you know they're slight and they're curved and you're just going to touch around here I can touch around with the dark, reset my brush, pick up a little bit of the light, and touch around slightly, and that'll just give you a nice feeling of movement in there. Let's use some nice soft to uh, develop our form, our bowl shadow, our bottom form, and our bottom form shadow, which we'll push onto this side here. That'll keep this all a little bit softer right through here. Okay. We don't want to have quite as much contrast here. I'll take that dark, a little bit of that green, a little bit of that background. So if I want something to set back, like I want this rose to set back, I make it more like the background. I physically make it more like the background. And I do that by just adding the background color into it. Or you can pull in like this, which drags in that background color. But that'll physically make that rose a little bit more soft than what we have going on in the front. And we can come back and reset that front and reset that contrast back up here and pull some of that back in a little bit more. So we make sure that that's going to definitely going to get back in there. See, if I come in here and if I go put this color in and I'll put it on, then we'll take it out. What I've done is I've just flattened the composition because this shadow is just as dark as that shadow there and that rose will not push back. So if I soften that out, see how that rose pushes back. So that's very important. So as you get further away from your main setting rows, then you make it a little bit more like the background. Okay, that's very important. Let's take some of those soft colors here and let's just put it on the side. This is going to be a rosebud here. And so we'll just put on some nice rosebud colors here and uh, take a little burnt sienna and a little bit of the red here. And we don't want to make it too too heavy there, so that might be a little bit heavy. I'm just going to make kind of an oval shape. I'll put a little light color into that just to soften that back 
here and a little bit of background color. Just a quick suggestion of it. Again, let's keep stuff really soft here. Let's go into maybe a little more burnt sienna, maybe even a touch of yellow, because we're going to have these colors on the flowers here as well. And uh, let's put in some soft center there. So again, I'll put it on heavy onto the corner, and then I'll roll over to the other side here to soften it out. We'll put on a, a little bit of a shadow and a little bit of our form shadow onto this side of the flower. So we'll have the light side and the dark side of the flower. And uh, maybe just a bit of the shadow. And that shadow is a little dark there. So I have when I put that shadow on there and it's too dark like that, too, I can run my finger through, which disincorporates the colors together. It, it, not blending. And what I mean by incorporate is the two colors start to you know, move through each other, model through each other, and that makes the look softer. I don't blend them. Blending them, when you blend them together, you make another color. I'm not. I'm pushing them into each other, so they're overriding each other. I want to stop just short of blending. In other words, if I come in here and if I push these tones together here, soon all I'll get is one color, okay, because I've mixed them together. So if you have that problem when you're doing something, that you, if you manipulate it too much, you'll push them all together and to become one. But what you want to do is just pull these across like this so that you'll see a little bit of that light down into there. Now, those aren't blended together. That's just the light color dragging over that color there. If I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I will make that one color, and I don't want to do that. So if that happens to you a lot and your flowers start to look flat, that just shows that you're working the flower too much. You need to be a, a little bit more thoughtful when I say about your strokes. Start to think about what you're doing with your strokes there. Okay, so now what we do is we have this painting here. We have ideas here for our flowers or where they're going to, you know, where they're going to go here, you know, into the painting. And now what I'm going to do is reset some of the movement of my of my uh, flowers here. I'm going to take some some burnt sienna, some pine green, maybe a touch of black here into this nice dark color. And let's just come back up here and using just the chisel. I love to use the chisel of the big brush like this. And because it doesn't make it perfect, we'll just, you know, pull out like this and the idea of some stems coming here. And then I like to just quickly pull through like that to, to break them just a touch here like that. We'll, we'll continue down here with some ideas of some stems and some movements. And, you know, I used to always just make stems uh, curved, but, you know, stems break at different angles and stuff now. So I like to uh, show that every once in a while. And stems coming through. And remember, if you have one rosebud coming out here, it doesn't. this stem doesn't come off of that. You'd have to show a second one here that might be that stem there. So, you know, you, it, it doesn't, I used to for so many times just show one stem and, and stuff. And that means that stem's coming out of that flower. Well, no, not really. It's got to have a, a little bit. There's got to be a few more things happening to that stem or a few other stems and movements there. So especially back in through here, you're going to have lots of stems coming out back out into that area there. Let's take a little bit of our pine green and some of that black. You can add some blue to that, make more of a cooler blue green. Or if you really want something cool, you can add a little red violet to that green. Lots of greens that will do. Let's come in and let's just set some dark. Now, this dark, it, you know, not only matches the shadowing that we want to do in here, but this dark will also do what we did in um, uh, the negative painting volume of the uh, of the books, where I come in and I show you that you can shape a rose to the outside edge here with doing what we call some negative painting. Paint the edges of the rose negatively. So here I'll put this dark in, and this will lift the rose a bit. Lift the rose into our painting a bit here. Lift it off the surface. Contrast. And I'll, you know, you vary the color here between the burnt sienna and the black. I love that burnt sienna to show up in some of that as well. We'll push some of that right back here. That'll help that rosebud. We'll maybe put a rosebud there. 
or maybe it'll forget about it in the painting and not need it. We need to have an edge here. So sometimes I'll use the chisel, some you know, and, and pull in, you know, like this. Sometimes I use the corner of the brush and I'll I'll draw off the corner of the brush here some angles and some stems. Um, just because the corner of the brush will make it look a little different, just lightly with the corner of the brush there, some movement. And that's different. That looks different than so I use the corner and then sometimes push a little flat there. That makes it look different than, um, than the uh, chisel of the brush. So, you know, just using the corner and lightly dragging it, sometimes pushing it and dragging it, will make a different look or a different uh, type of stroke and stuff than some of the others. So that will put some of the shadow uh, in there, which... Uh, looks great now with with roses and stuff you know the leaves of course there's all different kinds of rose leaves but generally i like to put out somewhere like right out here i'll take some of this dark maybe a little burnt sienna some yellow over here or a little bit of blue make it all on the blue side here um, but i'm going to keep it kind of dark here for right now i will um going to make some rose shapes so uh leaf shapes so leaves and sometimes I'll just draw out the little angle there and maybe a leaf coming out a leaf coming out and one coming out through here but leaves you know generally go in uh, sets of like three here so and they're kind of oval shaped here there's different kinds but oval shaped here and I'll, so I'll make a, a leaf like this now I like to put out some 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 good shaped leaves sometimes in the painting not everywhere I like casual expressions as well but some good shaped leaves so that they contrast each other so maybe we'll we'll put a a nice shaped leaf out here like this and pull this one out here like that and then right into a the one right here and this is called the trinity of leaves here and notice how I'm pushing and using the angles I'm using the angles of the brush and pushing in and out here. And that just gives a nice shape to that. Now, sometimes I'll come back. Let's take a little bit of green and black, burnt sienna here. And just change that up a bit. And, uh, you know, again, see, I load that corner, push that corner to the inside and stroke through just a bit. That'll give a, a, a shadow here to the, to the, the uh, bouquet side of this here. Maybe uh, drag over that one just a little bit more there. Sometimes I'll take my finger after I get that down and just drag like that and just take a line through just to remove some of the edges of that leaf there, which just kind of blurs that out just a bit, and I like that. But that's how I usually like to set a leaf out there if I'm starting to develop the shapes because that will contrast some of the other more casual leaves that I'll be doing here a little bit later on. So... Right up in here might be a nice place, but we got to change our green. Let's lighten it up, make it a little bit more yellow green. Maybe even toss a little bit of our reds in there. So this this is a nice soft green here that has just a little bit of a reddish cast to it here. And let's just come out like this. And so this time we'll we'll make this nice oval shape here to the point here, and come back around in. So that'll be a leaf. Coming here, let's just pull in a little bit more. See, I just, and if I just move that brush over a little bit, I can make it, uh, you know, a, a little bit of a point to the leaves there. Let's change that slightly. Let's uh, warm that, maybe a little bit more yellow. Change the tone just ever so right here like this. Here, and pull that through back in I do the leaves kind of simple there um, I can add you know like we did with the last one I can add you know e even the idea of a vein line or a, a quick little stroke or two to suggest form shadows there and then let's come back in maybe a bit more yellow even yet and add the uh, tip one here as it's coming right around to its tip here and just put that shape into that one there. And maybe uh, back over, let's put a little burnt sienna into the edge of that, in the corner of that one here, and just pull through. And you can see a little bit of burnt sienna into that one there. 
Okay, so by adding that, you know, and when I wipe that brush, I push it very flat like that. So that gives me a real nice chisel. And I use that chisel to come in here. Let's just shape this one again. I use that chisel to come in here like this and pull in and shape that. And I can use that to, if I can pull them, stroke them close together. I can give like a little jagged edge there to those like that. Or I can step away. There's a, there's a bunch of different ways you can do those. And set those in there but you can come back out and out in here and set some other little leaves you know coming in some other leaf shapes coming into your composition here like this you know maybe you have a few other little leaves or ideas of leaves you can take them off I like to take it off just a bit every once in a while to strike through just to and it softens that edge of that leaf there Especially if these leaves are out of the, or you don't want them to compete against the center of interest, which of course is your flowers here. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So now you see those leaves there. I could have some, some additional ones. I might have one or two. Since we're going down towards the darker part here, let's take some black, some pine green, burnt sienna. Here, maybe even a touch of red violet into that. Change that tone up just a bit. And, uh... Maybe add just the idea of a softer or darker little leaf there. Just take that off. Just the idea or just a soft indication that there's some leaves there falling off this side here. That will work. Here, we'll push some more back in here. Maybe we'll have that light little rosebud back in here as well. Put a little color so we don't forget him too much. Okay, so that kind of really fills up quite a bit of that composition when you get those leaves in there. We can uh, take some, uh, again, I'm always changing the colors. I'm looking to always change the colors. Get some yellow oxide and some blue and red and some of these leaf colors just a little bit different and add just a, a, a couple of, green touches right back out over here slightly different that color it needs to have a little burnt sienna in that like these stems would have some kind of associated leaves with them here so we'll just add a touch or two of uh, these colors and stuff out here maybe uh, push these two leaves out together like this bring it in and all of a sudden you got the idea of the leaf We'll just take that off just a touch here. I chisel up that brush. And using that chisel, you can really make some nice shaped leaves. Of course, you don't want to make them always exactly the same, but you can kind of kind of jag it up the edge of that one just a bit there. Or take that off. Let's just that's a little harsh right up there. So let's just take some of that off show that up there now let's go back before we get going uh, too much more into this let's go back into here time for a clean paper towel and uh, let's uh, work on uh, some of our flowers again here and we want to get some um, some yellows and stuff like that in there now I'll because I have a lot of this green in there, I go grab that yellow. I'm just going to make a yellow green. So I'm going to go in and kill that green out of my brush here with some of my white, maybe a bit of my red in there, and see how that neutralizes that, uh, that green that's in there. So now I'm back to just a nice soft putty color. And uh, I'll come over to this side over here. This is where I'll put my yellow oxide, maybe a little Hansa yellow into that to pump it up just a bit here. And uh, we want to have just a touch of some of our yellows into these. Nice warmth, just a little bit on this one especially, just a little bit of a touch into there of these colors. And uh, here you can make these more yellow roses if you love yellow roses. Increase the amount of yellow. But you want to vary some of these, like this has some yellow in it and stuff. Very, uh, you know, one rose will carry more yellow than another or... One rose will have more pink than another. We'll, we, you know, we want them to all kind of be the same. They're coming from the same plant, uh, so they have some harmony. But beautiful paintings will will 
carry some different colors. And so sometimes on these paintings like this, if I feel that the painting is overall really, really warm, I'll turn around and add some cool blues and stuff like that to the painting just to uh, get a different look into that, uh, into those colors. Let's come in and let's grab some of our white, drop that right down into here. And let's go in and build some of the main uh, color here to the, uh, to the center here. So I've got this nice model color. So I want to come in here and build this main rose. I'm going to take just some of this thicker paint here and put it on the brush and use this just to pull down here and start to build. And I'm going to start to look for the bowl of the rose. And I'll wipe off some of that excess and we'll pull some of that around. So I have this nice soft, I can use the corner of it here to push around into the rows to grab some of that nice movement into that rows that I want to have. I'm going to come out towards the light side here. I'm going to push some of that thicker paint up onto the edge here. And I'm just going to set the, the feeling of the, of the outside petals here of this rose just so I pull in there with the flat and then I turn the brush slightly onto its three quarter and then to the chisel and that's causing the petals here to kind of roll so when you're painting with the big brush like this and sometimes I do this and lift out but when you're painting with the big brush I'm constantly looking at different angles almost like drawing with it whereas before if I use a smaller brush I'd stroke and stroke and stroke because the flat of that brush the flat of the brush works for everything. Here the flat of the brush, because it's a bigger brush, doesn't work for everything, not for creating small petals. So I may use just the chisel of the brush to create the look of a smaller petal up onto its edge like that. Or as I come to a, wi a wider area, I might use the flat of the brush to pull out just a bit like that to, to set some of the feeling of that rose. And so I might use just short little strokes like this, especially onto the shadow side, just to get a little bit of a feeling of the, of the, of the flower there, of the rose. And uh, let's build up here. We're going to have some, some lighter petals here. So we want to go eventually almost to pure white here for like the edges of this rose here, like, like that. Now I, what I've got to do as I'm building this, Let's come in close here. What I've got to do as I'm building this is I've got to, you know, determine how much of this streak I want to how soft I want. So sometimes I'll wipe my brush like this and just drag through and soften those colors together or pull out and, and look at the, the softness of the movement. So here I have some edges to the petals here and, and I have to determine just how soft I want this to be out there. You know, or how um, how much detail I want it to have, how much individual petals I want to paint here, and big thing is I'm putting on some light petals, and then they have to soften here as they come down around this this side here. So I can take wipe my brush, use either my hand or this, and this is taking the the color off and dragging that that shadow back and forth, and see it's I don't want to do it too many times because. I will blend it, but see I'm, I'm softening that movement, those tones coming together there. So underneath there I had some yellow, I might redefine that yellow again, push that in there like that, push that back, and you see some of that nice light movement. But the big thing is, is I'm building this color that's bringing that more forward. I'll use smaller little touches of the, of the corner of this brush here to draw that and then I can soften and take out with the corner that has nothing there. So I can push back in the idea of some of some uh, center, you know, type of uh, uh, petals there. Maybe change the red and go to a little bit lighter red. A little naphtha red light can go into some of that and push around and just give you some of that nice colored color movement in there. That looks good. And, and again with everything, even I'll take some of my yellow, my green, my reds here, I'll push all of that together here and lift up and that helps set that bull shadow again. Overall, we want to keep the shadow to the bottom here and lighter up it to the top. We have to remember that, that we don't lose that here. And so sometimes I'll even take and restate again. If I feel I lose it, I'll come back in and restate Again, a little bit more powerful color. Sometimes I'll leave it very unblended 
It all depends on how casual I want the rose to be. Sometimes I'll leave it very unblended. But I do this, the stating the colors back and forth quite a bit. I'm wiping my brush, stating the colors back and forth quite a bit as I build the rose, okay? And especially with the, the big brush like this, I like to use these, these edges and these angles. And uh, so I want to have a little bit more of yellow putty color here to this. It makes the flowers look a little different. While we're doing that, let me just take a little bit more yellow here. So we'll build this one just a touch more yellow here. Set it to the back back there. So it'll be a little different than my other one here. And it's just nice soft. It's not going to be as light. Can't be as light because it's not going to have as much interest. But I'll use this here. I'll tap and I'll use, and I'll think about the edges and chisels and corners of the brush as I just touch around in here, kind of like sketching the little bit of the rose back there as it goes back here. Maybe a little bit more light, and you see I have heavier onto the, that corner here. And then I can reach over to the other corner just to soften that out as I stroke that through like that. Soften that out and around here. Let's put on a few petals. So petals, and then I can use more of the chisel to angle that back. Put on a little bit of light, just pull, poke a little bit of light into the tip of that, and just pull in and lift off, and that'll give you just a touch of highlight there. Here, and maybe let that sit underneath there. So we might want not quite that light, so I just hit it again there, and see how it just makes it a little softer. That'll allow me to pick up even more white right here like this, and use that angle and that will push this light petal of this one right up on top of that there. There we go, like that. Definitely where I want that to be is this nice light petal right up there like that. Okay. And this one just gets soft out here. Just some movement here like that. Just soften some of that out. And you determine just how light this flower is going to be. Of course, it's it's hard to know exactly until um, you know we get this this one right here finalized, which we're not close yet. We still have some painting to do on it. But let's drop down to the um, to the other one right down over here. Okay, and let's make this one here maybe a, a little bit more onto the red side. Let's just push a little more red into this one here. Let's push a little red into this side too. I like that red in there. So it's a little naphthol red light, a little red violet. You can also put a, you know, change that tone up a bit, put a little burnt sienna into it, right down in there like that. Um, maybe a bit of our yellow right in there. I mean, but this is definitely going to change the tone of this flower. We'll have, I might put a little more red violet into that, nice deep, and get this a little darker. Overall, this flower can be a little darker. It's sitting down towards the shadow side of the composition here. Step back just a bit so you get that better feeling of that. Let's add just a touch of that comp contrast right in there like that that one and see I just use that chisel and I pull up and and uh, that really works that really really works let's just add a bit of that right in there push that in and out just a touch that really really works here there see I love see I got this nice thick paint so I can you know, and I showed you this in other volumes of the book. I go this way and I, and I increase the shadow. I wipe my finger and I pull this way and I increase the light. So I'll go back and forth. Try not to do it too many times because you'll start to blend it. But you can set the look, you know, the movement of that rose back and forth like that. And look at that interest that you get just dragging that color because the color is thick. There's a lot of it on there. And just lightly, lightly dragging that color around. You get get more more interest there more interest to your painting let's just come in here and push a, a little bit of light 
into these. Let's set that one down underneath that one. There. Push those in. Push that color in and out there. We don't need too much into this rose here. Maybe a bit more reds. Burnt sienna is here. Some red violet into this. Some lighter reds here. Model those colors together. See it's modeled on the brush. And we'll push this one just a bit more pinky red. Here around. There we go. And uh, maybe just a touch lighter. Here just to say we did it on that edge right there. Maybe a bit out into these reaching petals just a touch that tone, that color on there. There we go, just soften that through. You just lighten your brush, prep it up here like this and pull through. You'll soften it, those tones together a bit and that rose won't have as much power. So let's, um, let's do that and restate our shadow. I always like to restate those shadows. And what it is, is I use these corners here like this to get some different angles. And in the book and stuff that it is, what I talk about that is I can shape petals like this and push and shape petals and do all kinds of things, you know, that I, I think I might want to do on the rows here, you know, shape and pull corners back like this, wipe my brush maybe just touch a little dark into that and just pull through lightly like that and just soften that that movement like that and see you get those beautiful little shines and stuff so I do all kinds of little things like that but I use the corners of the brush as I'm as I'm shaping them up there I'm gonna lift off just a bit of this and reshape the movement of this in and out Usually with my main rose, I do it quite a few times. And I'm probably, I feel my rose is a little bit closed up here. So one of the things I'll do here now is I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and red violet. And let's just open this rose back up. That will increase its importance into the painting. So I've got the, the front bowl petals a little bit too tight around there. So I want to open this rose back up a bit here. I got to be careful that I don't get it all too much the same. So I'll take a little green and I'll take a little of these colors and I'll go through. But every one of my color movements is always kind of turning here. So see, I still have some nice movement there uh, into the uh, into the rows and stuff into into that center. Some nice movement, but it has to have the most. I'll take that corner of that red violet there, go back into that again. It has to have, it's the main rose of my painting here, so it has to have the most uh, contrast and movement of all of them. So I'll just come back and reset some of that right in there like that. That looks pretty good. Let's set some of that light color. Touch some of that lighter red around the composition that helps harmonize your, your flowers. There, so that they all sit in nice harmony, working around through there. You know, and we'll just, that's what I like to do, is just play those just a bit going around. I have this rose back there a little soft compared to the leaves, so I might want to bring up that edge. We'll get a little more yellow and light into that. And bring up that edge just a bit more here. And that petal right there. So you can shape petals and, and uh, you know, do more perfectly shaped petals if you want. Um, or you can uh, just get nice movement here to it. It's your choice. There we go. That's kind of pretty. So there like that. Maybe drag that shadow up like that and just leave that. See, that just gives a nice, a nice movement. But here I have more shaped petals by using the brush flat. I have more shape petals where you use the brush at a slight um, slight angle. Now, one of the things that's bothering me too is this is just a perfect circle right out through here. So I do want to change some of that and 
well not quite to that step but what I want to do is maybe extend one or two of the petals out a little further and what that does is see it's gonna it's gonna take it off off of the uh, off round just a bit here and see what that does to the rows so that's the other thing I watch for is that uh, I don't get my rows always so round so perfect round uh, that's not always a, a great thing so now I've got so much white in there that I'm losing some of my my shadowing that I want to have in there so I will just wipe my brush and will lift out lift off some of the white this is something that, that I do in negative painting and the negative painting techniques taking off like that and I show you that taking off like that and just wiping your brush and lifting off it reveals and I'll leave that little light tips out there to the painting so I do that quite a bit you know but I make sure my brush is a little bit flat and I can lift off and leave little light tips like that um, I like to sometimes come in in there and just push little light tips like that like on the edge of a rose wipe my brush and then negative paint out leaving just a bit of that light out there like that so it gives a a different little look to the tip of that rose and you can come in and add another little angle of petals or something like that in there a little different let's use the corner right here and just put in that uh, back corner of the the rose there like that maybe a little bit of a turn to petal there yeah that just gives a different look to them. I'm going to make these roses all look a little different so that's the goal so we'll uh, let's just open that up just a bit more there okay so that dark red goes right down into that throat and then we'll move that up and around and I can wipe my brush and I can lift some of that dark red out I can take a little bit of a light pink here onto the Let's get it onto the corner of the brush. Just load the corner of the brush like this. And I can draw that around into a few areas like this. See, if I wanted to make more uh, precise petals, draw that around. Wipe your brush. Maybe pull through a bit just to soften and, and blur those. Don't blend them. Just soften and blur those together like that. You know, but I like that real center dark to be right down right down into the front there like that that is the most important part of that because that gives depth to the throat of the rose here whoops that's a bit light so we'll just put a little burnt sienna into that take some of that out maybe leave a little bit of those touches there that's just interest there that's kind of nice and uh, let's build this up a in here and build a little more white into this maybe a touch of that yellow nice warm let's build some nice warm light color here let's push that right in right in there like that just a little bit use the flat of the brush you get a lot of power to your petal you use the chisel and not quite so much and let's just lift out a little bit of the roundness there Maybe lift out a little bit of the shadow. I like, you know, some of that that chunky movement in there. So, so I'll put that on. See, like this, I'll put that heaviness on like that, and then I'll lift off to it. Lift off, lift off a bit of that color, the excess there. So I just touch and lightly, lightly lift off of that. But I'll use like the corner here if I want to give like the idea of some back petals like that. And uh, let's drop a few round ones right up here like this onto this side of the rows here. Let's get some lighter white and build that up a bit more right up here into the front. Curve that around. Finding that bowl there, right there like that. And uh, again, I'll lift off or round through like that, or if I want to separate those petals just a bit. 
give the idea of that separation. You can come back and put that white edge back in. Okay. Just like that. Wipe out to it. So you can get some different angled petals and stuff like that. We can drop some petals out here. Maybe give that this one's going to sit right over that one. So, like I say, this is the main rose here. It's going to be the lightest. We'll just pull some petals out here. Now we've got to let that form shadow kind of take over on this rose. So, we'll wipe our brush and let that shadow just kind of take over those petals there. I like that. Okay. Build this a little bit more. Pull that through. Always kind of rounding that bowl in. And just create some movement there. So sometimes I'm pulling out, sometimes I'm pulling in and just kind of trying to find the bowl there. And if you leave it like that, you make like the, the impression of a little edge of a petal there. A rose petal. Here. Maybe there's one right there. Comes in. So sometimes I do just full throated, you know, big round rows. Sometimes I put in just multiple little petals like that. I kinda I kinda try all kinds of things and and uh, you know your trials here are are really great because they uh just add more movement and, and interest and stuff to your painting here. So try some things. If you don't like it, lift it off. But try not to lift all of it. Let some of that stay on there. You might get some, some movement there that really looks nice. So we'll let some of that stay. And lift some of that off. But you might get some nice movement here that you really like. Here. And we'll put that on there. There, just kind of lift that off in there. Yeah, like that. So see, just soft and touch that corner of that brush. And stuff. you get some very nice, nice movements in there. Now that allows me, I got that so light, that allows me to add just a touch more light up into this one. See how that big one controls that. So that allows me to add just a few more little chisels and touches here of light here onto this one as well which I'll just do that real quick like that just using that chisel just boom 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 don't play around too much because that'll every stroke you take starts to bring it forward so we don't want to do that so but I don't I want to also like I had kind of a line here I don't like to have just rounding lines so I like the petals to undulate I like the petals to look a little different and you know, back and forth and edges and stuff like that. And like that little cut edge there, that looks great. And then I'll just pull out that shadow just a bit. So I, I don't have a perfect line. You know, you see that line broken. In other words, see it's undulating that's through there. It's not just a quick shadow line that uh, comes all the way around there. Let's um, come down here a little bit lighter pink here. Let's put some of that right into this flower here. A little bit of those light movements. Pull those out. Here. Little curved movements around. Make that rose look just a bit different than the others. Here. Maybe a touch of these petals here so that brings those forward just a touch and again I like the undulation of the edges of these petals so you see some and push in and out leave sometimes leave just a little bit of a light touch there push in and out here like that maybe just a idea of another petal or so right there. There, like 
that. Well, that rose is a little different. Let's come back again, soft again. Right back up over here, soft. Maybe a bit more onto the yellow side onto this one. There. And let's get just a bit of that light here. Push in and out, just touch. See, I like that undulation of those colors. So it's not just a absolute perfect little shadow there. I like to undulate those because that just that just gives more interest. Now we want to keep this rose a little smaller, a little tighter, and for it to lose some of its interest back here because it's falling away from our uh, composition here. So we want to um, keep it a little bit uh, tighter, just a little bit tighter. Use your chisel, chisel to see how the chisel makes the smaller little petals like that. And you can push them and touch them around like that to give uh, a little bit of more different movement to them. Right here, like that. There we go. But this rose is going to be, you know, more of a just a, a casual expression of it. And here, and let's get some. Uh, bit of yellow back into this one and just a touch of our light onto this so that's a like a rosebud right there see I just use that corner just boom like that and I like to you know I like to strike it kind of fast and kind of confident like that and that uh, uh, just kind of does it kind of you know, it just kind of puts the uh, suggestion of it in there, and that's all that that really needs there, is that for that suggestion there. Now, I want to uh, also do something that the Dutch did all the time here on this, is warm. So I have this overall center here, it's very cool, and I want to warm some of this. So now, some of this rose right up in here, I'm just going to add a little bit of my naphtha red light and a little bit of the um, uh, yellow oxide with that. It makes a nice warm kind of an orange color. So it's not all completely cool. We want to take a few strokes of that nice warm orange back into some of these roses here. Maybe just a touch of it here and there. Get that nice warm orange into there and that's pretty it goes with that burnt sienna kind of color too very nicely and we'll push these suggestions of these rosebuds here just boom with the big brush just suggest you know the rosebud is an oval shape and you're just gonna just just give a suggestion of that oval movement that oval shape there It doesn't take too much there like that that's pretty good I love that orange that look at that orange I want to add it in a few areas here it's pretty uh, you know, I, I like to do this on the on the flowers like this on roses and stuff is to just come back with uh, some strokes of color even after I had the set form just come back with some strokes of color like that, that you see those colors coming back in there. And it's so pretty. And even here on the cool side, see, we can bring that orange back right here. And it'll just give more temperature variation right in there on that side of the rose. So it's not just light and dark there. You're picking up some some warm tones in there as well. Isn't that pretty? And I do this a lot. I, I play with the colors. I'm careful though. I, I'm careful. And this is what I want you to do is be careful with 
how many times. You can try a lot of tones, but don't stroke them too many times. That's the most important thing. You see, I'm just hitting and moving these tones. And if I stroke them too many times, they blend too much. I, I'm not. I'm just adding an accent a tone here into the rose. And, and so uh, I don't want to do it, though, too many times. Now, let's vary. Let's come in and vary some of the edges of that. Let's get our blue, blue-green maybe, with some black. And we'll do a little negative painting here and shape up some of these outside edges here of this rose here. Push those tones right in there. Get this other color blue-green in there. And it gets a nice, nice contrast right down in there. But I want to, I want to make the edges of the rose here. Let's get some more green in there as well. Changes. I want to make the edges of the rose here undulate a bit more. So it's not all exactly the same. And sometimes it's easy just to like to paint a strike like this and just to come back and just change the edge a bit here and there with the negative painting. And this is why I spent you know, a whole book on the negative painting because it, it does so much. I mean, this is basically the technique of negative painting that, you know, um, uh, porcelain painters and stuff use. And then I'll touch a few little lights in there to get that color in there as well. So we'll get some other colors of lights in there as well. So it's not just always dark. I'll get some other colors in there. But you see that just builds that, that white up, right? Let's get some little touches of some of those tones right into these upper leaves up there. But that negative painting really works. Let's get some of that. And maybe even on to change over. Let's go towards the burnt sienna side here. More towards a darker brown. Burnt sienna and a little black and blue and stuff here. Maybe a little bit more black blue. Here. And let's do that right up in here onto this one. So we see some, some of this variation here these petals on this one here and you know let's follow also what's what some of the things that we were doing here earlier pull down maybe a bit with that pull down push that up and down like that get that nice vertical movement maybe across a couple times but put that dark in there like that and pull down let's get some more burnt sienna with that Maybe a bit of burnt sienna here onto this side, here. That's good. Maybe a touch here on those. There. There we go. And um, around here. Sometimes I'll pull that on like that and just blur the edge out, especially when I start to hit towards the outside edges there. Now, this one here, I'm going to take some of that color that I just had, I'm going to add some extender to it and thin that out. Uh, thin this out, I'll show you. This is So sometimes I get an area of a rose that might be a little bit too bright, and this one's a little bit too bright in that area from where I want it to go. So I'm going to push it back just by glazing it back here like this, pushing some of those colors and take those colors into that part of the rose there. And see how that starts to push that rose back. But I have to do it with a little bit loose color. So and what happens is, is that it's just overriding it a little bit, toning it down. It's a loose color that I just lightly put over the surface there of that one. And then I bring the rose back up just a touch there. And the more I wipe it, the more I work that, the, the farther back it goes, you know, into the painting. And so you kind of control that. But that's just softening that edge of the rose, which is what I want to do there. 
it a little more dark right there. Nice contrasting area I'm building right in there with that. A little bit of our, our angles of our rosebud here. So we can push that angle there up into the to the septals there and the calyx and then maybe draw out that continues on here like that. It's a bit thick, so I'll just run my finger through it a bit and soften it and blur it out. We'll get some of those other colors covering it up, but that sets that in there right now. Nice. So let's continue to work here. So I like those. I like that one sitting back there. I like this one that's more of a this center here is more of a toned orange here. Not as much as the red violet as the other one is, but maybe just a touch so we do have some harmony of the flowers. There. That one coming back in there. Now it could have some let's get some of these lighter kind of orangey petals here. Could have a little touch of those coming out here around this edge here. So I'll put it on and I'll just use my finger, push the colors back and forth. It's a, you know, I, I push these, I do this for movement. That's all. I mean, the viewer doesn't really need too much in here. See, because that looks like a rose. So you don't really need too much. And the more that you paint it, the stiffer it'll become. So I'll usually put it on and just use my finger or so, a clean part of my finger, which is getting a little difficult right now. <laughs> but, uh, or wipe the brush and, and you know, do like what I say, wipe the brush, create a chisel and lift out and, and create that movement there. But that's what I'm doing is I'm just creating some movement here. And then I look to make sure that, you know, some paintings I make my roses very round and some paintings I take my roses a little bit off round and put on some different shaped petals here so that they're not quite so round looking. And uh, I like those as well. So I like that like I like that one like it's bending down. I like that on that one. And uh, you know we'll create like the little rose buds here. And that's a little bright, so we'll take uh and if your palette colors, my palette colors, are some of them, not all of them, some of them get just a little stiff here. Um, my burnt sienna is just a little stiff because it wasn't completely globalized like the rest. So it dries a little faster. So colors, I've mixed it in, drying a little faster. And that's easy to stop, just mixing a little extender into that on your palette here. And that refreshes it, keeps it going. So, you know, we're an hour and a half into painting this, so which is a long painting for me, but it's... Uh, um, that will happen to some of your some of your colors that aren't quite completely globalized. They might start to tighten up a bit, which doesn't bother me because I can always loosen them back up. I had just a touch more movement to that one there. That's kind of pretty. I like that, that nice soft one there like that. That one's really kind of pretty. I like this other soft one here too. I like that bit of orange, toned orange there, just coming out of that. It's a different feeling to that one there. There we go. Just a little bit nice, nice, um, casual movement of it there. We'll put a little bit of that orange like right in here just to get rid of the, some of that. It, you know, you can get too much cool onto it. And my whole background here is pretty warm. So I want to keep my flowers kind of warm there as well. You know, reaching through there. Now, uh, we need to get some uh, lighter, uh, you know, prettier leaves into some of this. Sometimes I leave the the flowers really dark like this, or it, I mean the leaves really dark like this, because your eye will bounce through that. But then sometimes I, I will uh, make a warmer kind of or, or a lighter leaf. I should also let's just take a look, and I don't know, you know, until I take a look. So let's take a look like we're creating a lighter blue green, just to create some temperature contrast within this painting. Now thalo blue, like I've said to you, and all the other things. Uh, 
Thalo blue is a neutral blue. It's not really super cool, and um, uh, it's not, and it's not really super warm. But it's slightly to the warm side of, of neutral. And a lot of people always think, okay, it's cool. Well, it will look cool because some of these other colors are so warm. Okay, so you know, even though it'll it'll look very very cool here as I put this on the stato blue, pine green, and this will be a very very cool color here. It'll look very cool, and in essence, it's not as much. Now I can control that right here by my yellows. I can add a little bit of yellows into that, and we'll look at that. But let's just take a look at where we would put some cool that would that would uh, contrast the painting, like a little bit, like right in there. Um, maybe a little touch right in here that will contrast the warmth of the flowers and break up some of the that ah, I didn't want to go right into that one too much but I did and I'll just touch into a little bit just touch a few little movements of that color that cool and see that's that's pretty that's contrasting that uh, that color now we'll change it up maybe add a little bit more uh, blue to this darken this up a bit and let's just add a touch of that back in here to maybe these lower leaves right here have a bit of that in there and that's really kind of nice it doesn't have to be so so light you can also you know darken it down a bit add a bit of that right right into here look at that movement that we can create here with just a bit of that blue or it's blue green actually what I'm using here and create some of this nice and see that plays very nice here against some of these flowers contrasting these flowers here but it also because the you know if you don't it adds interest to the background but if a background is overall really really warm after a while it starts to get mushy you know um, what we say by mushy is just, it's just kind of bland and and so uh, you know, if I let me step back here, get a nice big view of this. If I take this and I lighten this up, this can become quite a, a, a nice sparking color throughout the composition here into the background. And, uh, you know, we'll just spark a little bit of this into the background here and there. Not too much, just a bit of it in here and there. And uh, that will just see how it instantly changes the temperature over this thing here so temperature you know when I first started painting temperature was never really that important to me and then as I started painting more a la prima and more casual and, and more beautiful florals temperature is one of the most important things so I love everything about this background that is in here but I might just create a little bit of the cooler and we can go cooler light here and we can tone that down add some of your original background into that but that cooler light here like this see what that does you know it just creates a nice spark here into some of that background here and look what that does there look what that does into that background right like there like that see and it carries it through it doesn't destroy the warmth of that at all it's just accentuating it but here it's very very soft so I took some of my original background color right into the blue I just have it over here off camera slightly but it's just a, a real light uh, it has just a touch of the the other color in it and I might just touch that through here and there and incorporate it and uh, cut, touch a, a few tones of it in around so that it uh, you know, breaks up some of that uh, that real warm, warm color here. And artists do that. We spark it. And my flowers have enough contrast that my background can support some of this. You know, it all depends on your flowers, too. How much, uh, you know, how much you have in your flowers that you can support the, the movement of something like this, of these colors. And that's why I say I never complete the background for quite a while into the painting because I'll add some of this stuff through just to get some of that that nice interest into it as well here that's pretty that works out kind of nice sometimes I'll set the light or warm 
back up on top of that or in front of that. Let's just set a bit more warmth right up in here. Maybe this, this helps us with our light direction in our painting. We'll just create a... Right, coming through there like that. Maybe that light's coming from right up at that angle there. There, like that. Sometimes the little sparks of the color. You know, I'll just spark the color back in there. I do that a lot. There was a um, Garden of Flowers book that I did. And I don't think I have one around here. Nope. In the uh, Garden of Flowers book I did, I did a lot of this sparking of the background colors and stuff like that in through here like this and see how that just that just adds more interest doesn't and it's it actually starts to soften the flowers a bit so we'll do a little bit of that but um, I want to build these initial leaves a little bit more the leaves feel um, that I have up there originally I liked them and I thought they were great uh, but now they, because I painted so much onto the flowers, they can be adjusted a little bit. I'll take some of the colors here, the yellows and greens and a little bit of these blues that I have here. And let's just come through and add those tones onto this one here. And see how that gives them just a little more pizzazz into the painting. Let's come in a little bit closer again. A little bit more, jazz them up just a bit more here. Especially that little blue going in there. And just pull through just a bit here. Like that. Again, I like these colors. I, I like these uh, these leaves and stuff like that to vary and change a bit. And So I use different angles of the brush here. Different angles. And see, you can paint some pretty leaves there. With that, just use different angles. And... You can take it a little bit darker if you want and, and pull from the vein line out to create like a little shadow. So if you want to create your leaves even a little bit more different, you can do that and, and cause some more contrast. It's one of the other things I do. I just take your chisel of your brush, pull out just a little and lift off. And, or you can use a little vein line or, you know, there's a lot of different little techniques that you can use there for uh, some of those. Some of those looks. You know, well, here I'll just give the idea that this is a rosebud with the little leaves and stuff around it. Here. Little things, just using the corner. This is where I really like that corner of that brush. Um, just kind of dancing that around in there. And a change in back. I have yellow and black as a nice warm yellow green I have some blue and some of that there you know sometimes uh, just changing these colors around a bit sometimes a little bit of the blue here dance some of that around a bit and some of those little angles and stuff there soft little uh, blue greens make some soft little movements here into your background stepping out away from that this soft little blue green nice little soft blue green here that will uh, contrast that warm that's behind it there just add a little bit there like that okay and uh, it's a building process, see? So I'm going to look through some things, and I was like, okay, I can have a little more. I like that little touch of cool in there. See? Just a little bit breaks that up. But now, you know, it, it, it's kind of a hole. So let's get some, let's head to the warmer yellow-green side. So I'll look for the warmth, too. The, the warmth that will come through little touches of warmth. And see, these little touches of warmth will pick up some of the warm colors that I have to the other side here. First, let's do it just kind of as a medium tone like this. Okay, just kind of break up some of that in there. And see the, see how they get those beautiful tones? Let's lighten it up, change it up a little bit, maybe a little more yellow oxide. If you want it a little brighter, maybe a touch of your Hansa yellow. Okay, and you can build a leaf shape in there if you want to build a leaf shape, 
or just like the impression of a leaf that's starting out there, something like that. You know, like maybe there's going to be one right in there. Um, maybe like this blue goes right into a little warmth right there on that one. You know, so you may start out with like right here, like this is warm. Maybe start out with this is an impression of a leaf and it just fades away to nothing there. And we'll just take it off shape just a bit. I got a little too perfect. Maybe like that. Here. There we go. So Joe's those just kind of drop down. Put light little tones and colors in there and get some of those variations. A little bit of that lighter tone color coming through there. Step back just a bit. Like that, let's just hit a, a little bit of a light, light little edge there. You know, how much you do that, how much you spark those kinds of things, that's up to you. That's how I, I would spark it and stuff. And then I, I tend to, when I paint something like this, I like to kind of like put too much and then start touching it and pushing it back. That's why half of it's here. I like to do that. That's what I do. So I put too much on and, and I know I'm putting on too much and and then push it back. And I do that a lot. I, I do that with the roses. You see, I, I put on and then I take off. Um, and that's the one thing that I, I've been trying to get through in some of my study videos here uh, this whole last year um, with everything, getting people to say, you know, when I came from decorative painting, we would put on and, and it was a process of putting on. And what I do now is I put on and I tend to, and I always, well, actually most of the time, put on too much and then take off to what I want. It's a little different way of doing it. Whereas decorative painting, we would put on, put on, slowly, slowly, slowly build. This is not. I boom, put it on, then lift off to what I like. That's how I love to paint. And that keeps it a little bit more of a, a casual expression here as well. I'm going to take just a touch of the, some of that green and blue and just touch through just a bit of the, the painting here. Let's... Uh, get some more sparking color. So we got a lot of light here. And these tones that are in here, they're beautiful tones, but they have a tendency to uh, be almost the same uh, value. So, you know, I have a, a few different darks, but I'm just gonna try something here. Sometimes I will spark with some light like this, uh, just light color movement out. And I'll take out, like I say, I. I will take out some too. So let's take some blue and black and some burnt sienna and put some of that on and just go through to take some of that out as well. And it's just color movements. You know, I look for, for color tone movements here. They might be small flowers. It could be just small little touches, you know. Um, I, I use them more for uh, just color, just touches. Here, just little, what I call it, the little sparks, the little interest of color. And I like to do that a lot. Let's get some yellow, some warmth of yellow. If I'm down in here, and I have some of those. So I'll just spark some colors here. You know, what are the touches? What are they? Don't know exactly, but We'll incorporate some of this in. We'll get some other little colors in here, little sparks of color coming out. Maybe a bit of warmth on that. And take some off. And just, and see, it just kind of sparks the color. Gets a little bit of uh, interest to it. We'll just hit those leaves again. Like I say, I'll hit them many, many times when I paint something here. And you can uh, put those shadows on there like I did up there on those if you want to have some more, uh, so, some something different there. Let's just... And so these little tiny sparks like this, I'll drop in a few areas. I, I want to restate a little bit of that uh, stem running in there. You can give, um, you know, sometimes I'll use like little points and stuff like that to make the uh, stems like this have um, the appearance of uh, 
thorns and stuff. Sometimes I cross the end of it to make it look like it's the end of a stem. Or I just, you know, little tiny movements like this just add so much to these stems. I don't, you know, this isn't, uh, you know, painting a botanical. This is uh, just very suggestive, impressionistic, uh, you know, techniques and styles and stuff. So we want to be just very impressionistic with uh, you know how we're rendering some of our our images and stuff like that here. So let's uh, you know, but I I paint like right up in these areas many times, so I can especially right up in here, so I can get a lot of tones and a lot of interest. So when the viewers up looking through here, they see a lot of things going on, and you know I may come back and restate stems and stuff five or six times during a painting here to get the, the look that I want to have till I have the, the detail and the working of it that I want to have, you know, or how clear I make an edge. I'm going to take a little edge of orange and green here, a little dirty edge of this on my brush, and, and just clean up this edge here, this rose, back, but this a little orange and green. The back side of that is mostly orange and stuff, so I, I just want to, this, I can negative paint this or whatever, but I'm looking to just clean up that back edge of that rose coming back through there. And see how that that looks pretty nice there. We'll put just a bit of light in there. And it just helps lift that rose just a touch. So that's some of the stuff I start to really look for in the paintings here. I don't think I need it out through here. I might might do a little bit of that right in here, like you see more of the, the actual petal of the flower here. And that just, see how you just see a little bit more of it. Just take a tiny bit of that orange right on the edge of your brush here and just paint that petal edge and lift off there like that. So when I'm using that three quarter inch brush, it causes me to think how am I going to position that to try to do it in one or two strokes and that's what makes the, the the working of this brush so well because it breaks all the little habits that you have because you got to kind of figure out how I'm going to work this big brush in to make this statement of color in that small little area. So your hand, if you do quite a few of these, your hand gets used to twisting and turning and working and those of you that, you know, uh, painted the casual, um, casual backgrounds here with this one with volume four that wrote to me and said, wow, how do you know how to do all of that and get your brush working that casual? And these casual ones that I do like this sell so very well for our, for myself as an artist. And you work, oh, how am I going to, you know, how do I go about doing something like that? That's how you do it. You start painting with these big brushes and it teaches you to, to you know, how to get your brush in there to do all these smaller little things, you know. You have tiny little, tiny little things going on and, and movements and stuff going on. And you have to figure out, how am I going to express that with this big brush? Well, it what it does is it starts teaching you to turn your brush and use your brush in different ways. And your brain starts to see shapes in different ways and different things. And it takes a little bit and it takes a little practice. And there's some frustration along the way. Of course there is. There is with everything that's, that's really uh, has a, that you want to learn. There's going to be a bit of that. So let's get some, build up these stems just a bit more here. And just break that edge there with that. Give that, that's a little too much power actually. It's a little too dark. So we'll take that off. Let's just put a little bit of yellow oxide with that and uh, lighten that up just a bit bit right into there. Take that and try to have a, kind of a clean finger and we'll pull through and that will just get that edge back in there. I like the, I like the power of that and I'm looking at that compared to my roses. It has a lot of interest out there but it's not taken away from the rose so and that's what I want to have is some more power and interest to these stems right up here like that because that's a good anchor for my design pulling my eye and my design down this way and uh, you know we might put little bits of 
those yellows and lines and stuff down in through here. Some of that. That burnt sienna and that yellow. That's a beautiful, beautiful tone that we just might add a few little strokes of that coming back out through here because it just carries that out now over to other parts of the design and I'm a big advocate of that moving that stuff out and you get all of this color that we build and see I just use different parts of the brush turn and, and use the chisel sometimes and this side here and we build all of this color all of this stuff and you know it's taken time and now look how compressed in those cools into the backgrounds look you know um, it's taken all of this time to build this and do this um, you know it and that's what it is and it's a building process you know what were the exact colors that I was going to do on this I didn't I had a kind of an idea but it's been a building process this painting has been an enjoyable building process for us here we're you know two and and I paint them so much faster now when I build them like that. Because we're not even, we're just about two hours into the painting here. I'm going to lighten up and warm this up just a bit more here. Because I can. Now with this part of the flower here. And pull this back through. And that just gives a little bit more of an interest. And I can lift off or grab that movement up like that this movement out just a bit like that's a tip or edge of the petal especially if I want these flowers to be very casual here put some nice thick white and just touch it out like that and that just you know those little tiny bits like that just add more interest to that rose and you know before I'd never leave like a little bit like that and now I do and uh, and it comes from confidence to do that. I can never paint this rose exactly this way again, <laughs> but it's a building process, you know, and you, you just kind of quickly touch it here. We'll build that, wipe that brush, and then just touch it and lift off just a bit, and that'll lift some of that extra white right off of that, and it gives you that undulation to the shadow that I think is so important. So I pick up a nice, thick, just drag it through there, thick white and just set it down there on the end like that. I'm just going to wipe that brush and then just lift it off to get that movement there. Or if you want to add another little tone or something like that in there that works like that. And, and it uh, just makes such pretty flowers. And We can add a bit of that back up here. A bit of that back up onto that one. Just push in a bit of that light right there like on the edge I use that edge like that you'll see me in the book do that and just use that as a little chisel edge sometimes I'll lay that little chisel edge out back like this like that and then wipe the brush and, and then use that chisel and lift off like this and get that movement so I get just a, and I'm trying to keep that pedal get a little interest to it but keep that pedal soft because it's on a back rose there so and that worked pretty well Let's just build this one just a bit here. So that gives that petal just a bit more there. Now it's a bit much. Like I say, I like to put on too much. I've wiped my brush. I'm just going to wipe it on my... Sometimes I, I do this, you see, as I, I wipe it on these, and that's why I have so much paint on these. So I wipe it like that, pulling it across the... Uh, this is a hard board underneath here. Pulling it across like that, and see how absolutely flat a chisel that that gives that brush gives that brush an absolutely flat chisel that I can easily just slide on like that to remove some of that extra so if I want that sometimes when I when I'm wiping with my my towel like this I have a tendency to pinch and I pinch and that makes that really undulated now I use that sometimes because that undulation makes roses look great but then sometimes you want petals that are like really sharp or straight or something like that because you're painting for variation then I'll wipe that brush on my when I wipe that brush on my surface here that's flat and I pull it through a couple times like that 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 fusion goes really really flat and you get a really super sharp chisel like that 
Okay? And that just makes nice cut edges. That makes really nice edges if you want to make a, see you can make a really super defined edge or, you know, give that nice jagged straighted edge to a rose if you wanted to have that up there like that. You know, so there's all different kinds of ways that you can uh, work those here. I'm going to take some of this light and step out some of that coloring right in there. It's a little heavy. So I'm just going to step that out with some of my light background right back through that. So, you know, your background can be painted back and through at any time and assist you. And so that just kind of softens that all back out. Let's come back in before we call this one. And uh, put back in just a little more of a nice softer yellow green here. Push some of that into that one there. And just take away just a little bit of that. But all of these nice colors in here. You know, that's what's that's what makes a beautiful painting. Get some of these moving in and around in there and stuff. Some of that nice movement. Doesn't always have to be a leaf shape. But one little leaf shape out here would be kind of one or two. It would be kind of pretty. Take a little, let's do it on the warm side. Burnt sienna and green. And you know, this it's beautiful. If you don't know, give it a try. Try it. And uh, let's just put a little leaf shape out here. Here and see if one or two of them work out here onto this one. Soften that expression just a touch. Yeah, see that kind of works. We'll push that one there. Maybe one right here kind of rotating down just a bit. Here we'll just soften that edge. So you see that edge of that, then that makes that other earlier stripe kind of look like one. Right down to that one there. And let's just soften this strike out just a bit so I can take any doesn't have to be the same background color just anything close to that and that starts to soften that out and uh, let's put a little more warmer yellow into that there we go and you see you get that nice movement that nice softer color that works better we'll soften that outside one there just a bit so now everything, so I've got my roses flowing down like this. I don't think I want to put any more clear edges on that. I like those just kind of fading away. Just having a little bit more contrast in there. If you wanted to put more edges on them, you can. Flatten your brush, pick up that little bead of color, put it onto the edge like that. Remember to use the corner of the brush and swinging it around here. Use the corner sometimes of the brush to lift off. I will put in different petals at different angles just by turning your brush at an angle here. You can make different widths to your petals, smaller, smaller, then chisel, chisel, chisel. So wide is flat and then turn the brush slightly to get to different uh, edges of it. And you know, how, how much you do, that's all up to you for you to decide how much the edges and stuff that you want to do. That looks kind of pretty with just a bit of an edge there there like that that edge in that in that flower just a bit just a touch yeah then at some point you're going to say okay that's enough that's a nice painting let's just leave that painting right where it goes okay so that's how you do that's you can see we do this whole beautiful painting just with this big brush and it's a nice it's a casual look it's a it's a beautiful look and of course if you go up to a bigger canvas then it, it becomes you know, different things. The size of your flower is going to be interesting. I do some very small, uh, small, small flowers, um, small roses with this too, that you're only going to do two or three uh, little strokes with it. It works, they work just as well, just as nice. They're just little movements of it. So use the big brush and try to, try to uh, capture some different looks with it. Learning how to twist and turn and paint with those twists and turns. And then that's really going to help you uh, get more um, more interest and stuff to your paintings here. I'm going to take a little bit of this color and put it right in here. Two. Yeah. And get some more interest and stuff and stop.
gets more interest to your paintings, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed Give it a try. It's really a lot of fun. Remember a couple of things, though, too. The consistencies. And sometimes, you know, don't, you know that thin paint can go over as a real soft, kind of like, almost like a glaze to push it back and work that color into there. Don't overstroke. That's the biggest problem. The biggest problem is people, over, artists overstroke it and they make that same color, okay? And uh, so just be careful with that. But this will help you loosen up and get more casual. Give it a try and it'll get you twisting your brush, okay? I'll see you on the other books. Thanks for joining me today. And as always, if you have any kinds of questions, you can always drop us a line at jansenartstudio at AOL.com. And uh, we'll be you know, happy to point you in the right direction. Look for us on YouTube. We have tons of YouTubes. As a matter of fact, we're, we're uploading a whole bunch more and created some new landscape, seascape channels. We have some multiple channels. One subs and if you subscribe to our, our premium channel on YouTube, then one subscription gets you to all the different channels from rose mauling, color and design. We're slowly adding videos to all of those areas there. So if you want to paint along with me, and uh, you can do that right on, on those channels there. Okay, thanks very much. I'll see you on the other things. Until then, give it a try, and you have a great painting day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.